This video is about equations of lines. You're used to seeing lines of the form y equals mx plus b. We can also use the function notation to describe lines, say f of x is equal to mx plus b. They both mean the same thing. The m inside this expression is called the slope of the line. It tells you how much does the y value change for a given change in the x value. So a line with a very large slope means that it's its y value changes a lot for a small change in the x value. So if you go to the right, let's say one unit in x, it might go up 10 units if it has a slope of 10. B tells you the y-intercept, which is defined as the y-coordinate of the line when the x-coordinate is equal to zero. Those two things alone are enough to uniquely describe a line. In this first example, we're asked to write the equation of a line that has a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 3, and then to plot the line. So we just put the information in directly. y is equal to 2x plus 3. Now we can make a graph. Maybe you want to make a table of values, or you want to use line properties. So I'll use line properties, starting with an intercept of 3, means it's up here. Then a slope of 2 means if I go one unit to the right, I will have to go two units up. If it was minus 2, I go one unit to the right and two units down. So one to the right, two units up. And for the next point, I can go one to the right and two units up again. One to the right, two units up and then connect the dots. So knowing a little bit about a, a, the anatomy of a line allows us to graph a line without making a table of values. Just like knowing a little bit about the anatomy of a quadratic allows you to, to do the same for a function of the form y equals a times x minus b all squared plus c, vertex form. Now to talk about slope a little bit more, this should sound familiar, that slope is defined as the rise over run, which is in turn defined as the change in the y value divided by the change in the x value, or delta y over delta x. The graph on the right hand side shows you a general line, indicating the, um, how the calculation of the slope would be done. You would, you would measure this distance here, you would measure this distance here, and then divide. Divide the, the y distance, that, that difference in the y values, and uh, then so construct that, so subtract them, and then divide by the difference in the x values. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show the middle step here, that m is equal to y minus y1 over, I'll say y minus b, y minus b over x minus a. So that's our delta y over delta x, and I'll put that in too. m equals delta y over delta x, y minus b over x minus a, where a comma b are, are um, a, a comma b is a point on the line. What happens if we rearrange this? So m equals y minus b over x minus a. What if we cross? What if we cross multiply? Multiply both sides by x minus a. So m times x minus a is equal to y minus b. That's the derivation for the formula I'm about to show you, and it's a more powerful formula for the equation of a line than y equals mx plus b. It says that the line can also be described by, as y minus y1, so instead of y minus b, I'm calling, instead of calling it b, I'm calling it y1, equals m times x minus x1. So I replace the a with an x1, where x1 comma y1, just like a comma b, is any point in the line. The reason this is more powerful is because you're often not given the intercept or not directly told how to calculate the intercept, 
In calculus, we will very often do a calculation that results in giving us the slope, and then fairly easily being, being, being able to find the, a y value at a given x value. So it's simple to take the types of ingredients that you're going to have in problems and plug them into the equation at the top right and not have to re do any rearranging. Just leave it alone like that. If you rely on the y equals mx plus b formula for your equation of a line, you'll have more work to do in answering the questions. So I recommend, even though you're not going to like it at the beginning, I recommend switching over to the one on the right-hand side for all of your equations of lines. Anyway, we'll go through a, a, a few exercises here to play with equations of lines and, and their components. So in part A on the left-hand side, we're asked to identify the slope and the y-intercept of this line. In order to do that, we have to, we have to since it's talking about y-intercept, here's one of those places where we actually have to use y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides, so a negative 4x plus 6. Notice I wrote this as negative 4x plus 6 instead of 6 minus 4x because I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking I want this to look like y equals mx plus b and this is going to be part of that process, making sure that the x part is in front of the constant part. Next thing I want to do is I want to divide both sides by 2. So y is equal to negative 4x plus 6 all divided by 2. When you divide a top by a bottom, you can take each piece on top and divide it by that bottom part. So negative 4x over 2 plus 6 over 2. So y is equal to, and then negative 4 over 2 is negative 2x. 6 over 2 is 3, and that's our answer. Okay, next one. I want, oh, that's not our answer. I forgot to, to actually fully answer the question. M is equal to negative 2. B is equal to 3. That's our slope on our under y intercept. Okay, now the next one. I want to get y by itself once again. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. 3y is equal to negative x plus 7. Instead of 7 minus x, it's the same thing, but I want it to look like y equals mx plus b. Now I need to divide both sides by 3, which means dividing each piece by 3. I'm not going to show the middle step of negative x plus 7 all divided by 3. I'm just going to immediately go to dividing each of those pieces by 3. So y is equal to negative x over 3 plus 7 over 3. And then I'm going to show you a trick. Dividing by 3 is the same thing as multiplying by one-third, just like dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by a half. So this can be rewritten as minus one over three x plus seven over three, which means m equals minus one over three and b equals seven over three. Okay, next one y equals 5. Where's the x? y equals what x plus 5? Well, I, I'm going to tell you what the what is. y, oh, not that, y equals 0x plus 5. There's a 0 times x there. It's just hiding. So, m equals 0, b equals 5. Sneaky. And the last one's even worse. X is equal to 3. What's the slope? Slope is undefined here. M equals delta Y over delta X equals delta Y over 0 since x is always 3. So the change in the x value, the x value can't change. It's always 3. It's a constant value of 3, so the slope is undefined. This is a vertical line. The slope, by the way, is not infinity. 
It's also not minus infinity. It's kind of both and it's kind of neither. It's just undefined. That's the best answer is to say undefined. All right. Next question over, finding the equation of a line passing through these two points. There's a few ways you can do this. I'm going to use this, the, the way that this begins by calculating the slope. So m equals delta y over delta x. So I subtract y value minus y value. And you can do either order. You can do the first minus the second, or the second minus the first. I'm going to do the second minus the first. So 8 minus 2 over 1 minus 3. So 4 divided by negative 2. Not 4, 6. What am I saying? Can't subtract today. Uh, 6 divided by negative 2, which is negative 3. So that's the slope of this line. Now I'm going to combine combine either point with m y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. I'm going to use that form. I'm going to use the first point, so y minus 2 is equal to negative 3 times x minus 3. And that's it. No need to simplify. If you want to simplify, you're going to get y minus 2 is equal to negative 3x plus 9. Uh, add 2 to both sides, so y is equal to negative 3x um, plus 11. And then you can confirm that both of those points are on that line by plugging the x value in and making sure you get the y value out. I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to say it's probably right. Okay, next one. We have two points, and again I'm going to start by finding the slope. You know, and, and I'll, I, I, you know, I want to circle this because someone's going to say, you're not done yet. But that might be the answer. Like that might be it. If you multiple choice question, the answer is written that way, not y equals mx plus b. Okay, next we have our slope m is delta y over delta x, which is 5 over 2 minus 1 over 2. That's your change in the y value. Divide by our change in the x value, 9 minus 3. So this is 4 over 2, 9 minus 3 is 6, 4 over 2 is 2, so 2 over 6, which simplifies to 1 third. That's allowed. Slope can be a fraction. Now combine with either point and the slope. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus the y value of the first point, one half, equals the slope m, one third. Here that's straight mark, one third times x minus the x coordinate, x minus three. And that's it. Circle that. Okay. Just going to draw a line. So if you're looking at this later, looking at the printed note. With a uh, finished note, you'll be able to make sense of all the pieces. Okay. Next question. The line contains the point 1, 3 and has a slope m equals negative 2, finding the equation of the line. So I'm going to use that formula right away. y minus 3 
is equal to negative 2 times x minus 1. That's a good enough answer, so that's fine. This time I'll do or, another answer, I'll simplify it. y minus 3 is equal to negative 2x plus 2, multiplying negative 2 to the bracket. Now add 3 to both sides, so negative 2x plus 5. The reason I'm doing this one this way is we're not just asked for an equation of a line. In part b, it asks us to do something with it. And it's going to be easier to do that thing with the form on the right-hand side. One thing that is very infrequently taught in high school level mathematics is why do you do things a certain way for some problems and not for other problems? Like, why are we asked to do this? What's the point? Um, you know, why have two different forms of a line that are equivalent? Why just not pick one? And the answer is that you use the one that benefits you most for any problem that you're working on. So to this problem that we're working on here, the one in blue on the right-hand side is a far better form. Part B asks us to find two different points on the line, two additional points. The way we can do that is pick any x value except 1. Picking 1 would recover the y value that we, are, we already have, so it would not give us an additional point, it would give us the same point that was given to us. So I'm going to choose x equals 0. What I'm going to get is y is equal to negative 2 times 0 plus 5, which is 5. So point 0 comma 5. And now I'll pick 10. Choose anything. x equals 10. And you could have chosen anything for 0 instead of 0. Negative 3, 8. Just not, don't pick 1 because you don't want to have the same point. y is equal to negative 2 times 10 plus 5. So negative 20 plus 5, negative 15. So that means the point is 10 comma minus 15. So those are two additional points on the line. And everyone could have a different answer for this question. And that's it. See you in the next video.